Up until about six months ago, I was doing a majority of my work using a keyboard and a mouse. I spent more time than I care to admit trying to get faster and faster by learning every single shortcut I could. But around that time, I ended up picking up this, the Creator Micro from Work Louder. It's a well put together design with 12 satisfyingly clicky buttons, a roller for vertical scrolling, and a dial for fine tune adjustments. Work Louder received a lot of praise from the community, so much so that they collaborated with Figma. But then founder Michael DiGenova found himself with an interesting problem. Almost overnight, his entire inventory was bought out by one single customer with a very familiar name, Logitech. Now, Michael had seen this before. A big company buys product from the upstart, reverse engineers it, and then releases their own product to market. And I think we know finally what Logitech was up to. I swear, I'm done with the backstory. Hey everyone, it's Rowan here. Hope you're having an amazing day. In front of me, I have the brand new Logitech MX Creative console, a fresh take on the ever popular macro pad. Now, there's a ton of competition in the space, but I think that there are some fundamentally different things that Logitech is doing that gives them the edge. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a brief overview of the MX Creative console, how I use it, and talk about a game-changing feature that I think makes this a standout. Let's start out with why I switched away from the Creator Micro. For one, none of the buttons are labeled, so I have to rely on memory to know what each button does. Two, if I wanna add a shortcut, programming the keys becomes a hassle. And finally, adding any sort of macros is completely out of the question. What I really needed was something that's easy to use, something that makes my workday smoother, not more complicated. Enter the MX Creative Console. This is a two-part system that brings an enhanced macro pad experience to your desk. I picked it up in this dark gray color, but if white's more your thing, Logitech has you covered. First, let's talk about the Creative Keypad. It comes with nine customizable buttons with mini screens underneath. Each of the screens can have their icons customized depending on the app that you're using. And then there are two paging buttons at the bottom that allow you to flip through up to 15 pages worth of shortcuts. If the design looks quite familiar, it's very similar to the Stream Deck from Elgato. This kind of button design has sort of become an industry standard. I like the tactile feedback of the buttons while still being able to customize them. This takes the guesswork out of understanding what each button does and streamlines my workflow. Now you can use the keypad flat, or you can use the included stand to angle it towards you, which I find is more comfortable for a longer editing session. It does connect to your computer using USB-C, which is as simple as plug in and play. If there's one nitpick I have about this keypad is that I wish that it was wireless, but that isn't really a big deal. Now for my favorite part, the creative dial. This is where the real magic happens, especially if your workflow demands for a lot of fine tuning. In the center, it has this really big dial that's super smooth and premium feeling. It's really great for scrolling through things very quickly or tweaking things with precision. There's also some buttons and a roller that gives you even more control. One thing I wish that Logitech had included in the dial is some way to switch between a ratchet and free spin mode, something similar to what you might find on the scroll wheel on an MX Master 3. That way I can get tactile feedback as I make fine-tuned adjustments, but then also be able to fly through content. On the bottom is Logitech's signature device switcher that allows you to pair up to three devices. Although it isn't rechargeable, it uses two AAA batteries that gives you battery life up to 18 months. And unlike the keypad, this is wireless, so you can place it anywhere on your desk, which is super convenient. When you fire up the MX Creative Console, it comes with a basic profile, allowing you to do simple tasks like media control, or adjusting the volume. But if you want to take things further, you'll need to dive into the Logitech Options app. This is where you can customize the buttons and dials to do more specific things like open apps and automate repetitive tasks. One of the more notable features is app plugins. With most macro pads, they mirror the shortcuts found on your keyboard but switch apps and suddenly those buttons might not work the way that you want them to. With app plugins, the MX Creative Console is directly able to talk to your apps, reducing the need to program a bunch of complicated shortcuts. For example, in Premiere Pro, I can use this button to open the effects panel, 
use the roller to zoom into a section of my timeline, and then use the dial to make adjustments to my audio levels with extreme precision. At launch, it supports apps like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, and Lightroom, but Logitech is already working on plugins for other popular apps like OBS, Discord, and even Philips Hue, so there's plenty more to come. So how do I use the MX Creative Console? Well, my setup is actually pretty simple. On the base profile, along the top row, I have dedicated Apple Music controls. Previous track, play pause, and next track. Unlike the Mac media controls that control what's actively playing, whether it be music or a YouTube video, I can use these buttons to control my music without having to switch apps. Below that, I have quick access to some apps I frequently use, ChatGPT, Apple Music, Premiere Pro, and Tiny PNG, which is a great little utility for compressing images. To the right of that, I have a mute toggle and a stopwatch, which I find is super convenient for timeboxing my tasks throughout the day. One thing that I'm glad Logitech added was automatic context switching, and boy does it work well. Say I'm working in Premiere Pro. You'll notice the buttons right now are configured for the tools that I use the most, which makes editing a breeze. For example, these two buttons are the razor and ripple edit tools that allow me to trim my clips in my timeline so much faster. Or when I use the dial to scroll through my timeline frame by frame. Now, if I switch over to an app like Photoshop, you'll notice the buttons instantly change to give me the tools I need for photo editing. This sort of automatic context switching is super important to making my workflow seamless and efficient. Okay, so up till now, most of these features are pretty standard things you'd come to expect from a macro pad. But earlier, I talked about a game-changing feature, and it's called the action ring. Let's head back to the creative dial. And if you press this button in the corner, it'll bring up an on-screen menu that's a ring of shortcuts Logitech calls the action ring. You might think of this as additional functionality that pops up depending on the tasks that you're doing, but it goes deeper than that. Let's go back into Premiere Pro where I've set up my action rings for color grading. When I bring up the action ring, if I wanna make say adjustments to the saturation, I just hover my mouse over the saturation tile and then make adjustments with the creative dial. Now, say I wanna change the contrast. All I have to do is move my mouse over the contrast tile and then again, use the dial to make adjustments. It's incredibly smooth and because the action ring is contextual, it can adapt to what app you're using and what you're doing, which brings you a whole new level of control. When you look at the system as a whole, the buttons, the dial, and the action ring, you begin to realize that Logitech has hit a lot of pain points for creatives. Providing a good balance of hardware button and dials paired with a well thought out software experience that enhances workflows. If you're a creative professional or even just a daily user, I think the MX Creative Console is worth the look. Whether you're video editing, working in Photoshop, or just trying to streamline daily tasks, this system is extremely powerful yet incredibly easy to use. If you have any questions about the MX Creative Console or just wanna see more content like this, drop a comment down below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.